Hello there, um, this is Mrs. Vitron and I'm here to give you just a quick tutorial on Gmail. I know a lot of you are very familiar with Gmail, um, but there are just a few things that I want to show you in case you don't know about them. Maybe this will make it a little bit easier for you. Um, so obviously Gmail is what we use in our district to communicate, um, not just teachers, but also students. So when you log into your Chromebook, if you open the Gmail application, it will show you something like this. Um, and from here, you can actually do a couple of things. Um, I see a lot of students when they're um, trying to get to like a doc or a slideshow and they go and type in like Google Slides or Google Docs, but you can actually access all that from email. So what I like to do is I like to log into my email and then from there, I can access all the other um, Google apps. And you do that by clicking on these nine little dots that are um, on the upper right corner. So if you click here, it'll show you um, all the different apps that are available to you. And so obviously you can open your drive from here. You can open Google Classroom. You can go directly to Docs, Sheets, or Slides, um, and so forth. But let me just show you a couple of things in Gmail before I move on to Drive and Classroom. Um, so. One of the easiest ways to communicate with your teachers, especially um, since we'll be starting the school year remote, um, if we're hybrid, if we go back to remote at any time, is through email. Um, your teachers check their email every day. So during a regular school day, Monday through Friday, during the regular school hours, um, at some point, your teacher will check his or her email. Um, so if you need to communicate something to him or her, if you need to ask a question, something that you didn't understand, maybe either during class um, or something that your um, teacher emailed you, this would be the easiest way. And so if you don't know how to email or how to find your teacher, um, you would open a new email by clicking on Compose. And then it's going to ask you, who do you want to send it to? Um, and if you start typing the name of your teacher, it should show you like different, different people that have that name in our organization. So let's say um, you should know the last names of your teachers. So you can just start typing it out and you'll see how it, how it shows up. So let's say, I don't know, let's say one of your teachers is um, Mr. Wallace. Um, he's a social studies teacher at Grove. So you can start typing in his last name and you'll see his email pop up. So you can start typing W-A-L-L -L and then you'll see how, uh, his name will pop up. So then you just click on there um, you obviously want to add a subject, you know, what is your email about? Is it asking something about an assignment or a question that you have? So you always want to make sure you add a subject. Um, maybe say something about a question about our assignment. And then um, obviously always greet your teachers. Don't just say like, hey, I have a question, right? So you want to say, hi, Mr. Wallace. I have a question and then, you know, whatever, you're going to ask your question. Um, and then I have a signature. You'll see that, you know, my emails automatically have signature. Yours probably don't have that. Um, so then obviously always end with your name. And then since your teacher does have a lot of students, it might be helpful if you remind your teacher what period you're in. So maybe you want to sign it by saying, you know, just thank you, um, your name, maybe your last name, and then you can say period. I don't know, period seven, right? If that's the period that you have them. And then you can click send and that's it. That's all you have to do. So I will close this. Obviously, I'm not going to send in this message. Um, but then there's other things that I wanted to show you that you can do to maybe organize your email. Um, as you can see, all of my emails show that they're read. I, I don't like to see a number and have emails that I haven't read, but there's a lot of people who sometimes leave their emails um, unread or they feel maybe overwhelmed and they're getting too many emails. So something that can help you with that is if you create folders, um, they call them labels, um, and you can do that. So you'll see I have a lot of labels. So I kind of move my emails into these labels and then it's also easier to find them later on. If it's um, something related like to the LRC, I can just go into this folder and say, oh, I put that email in this folder and it's easier to find. So if you don't know how to create a label, um, you if it doesn't show up, you can scroll all the way to the bottom. I have to just click on more and then you're looking for um, where it says create new label. I would recommend you create a label maybe for each of your classes to help you organize emails that you receive from your teachers and you can name them by the subject or by the name of your teacher, whatever is easier for you. So I'm just gonna create a new label 
right? Um, and I'm going to call it, you know, math. Uh, seventh grade, right? Maybe that you'll know because maybe you have multiple folders from when you're in like sixth, seventh, and eighth. So math seventh grade, and then you create. So then you'll see it show up here. They're in alphabetical order, so then it's right here. Math seventh grade. So then as you receive emails um, from your teacher, maybe you want to move them into that folder. So then if you need to go back, you're not scrolling through your entire inbox, you can just go to that folder. Um, and the way that you do that is you can just select the emails that you want to move. And then you just drag them into the folder or the label that you want them in. And that's it. Um, those are pretty much the, the two things I wanted to show you in Gmail. I do highly recommend that you check your email at least once a day, especially if we are working remote or hybrid. Um, most of your teachers will probably be communicating with you via email. So you want to make it a habit to check your email at least once a day. Read those messages that you get from your teachers. Um, a lot of them post on Google Classroom. And I'll show you what that notification looks like. I just moved that email to this math folder. So when a teacher posts something in Google Classroom, it will look something like this. Like this one says, Google Classroom. Um, well, mine is a message that says that I it posted a message that I had scheduled. But yours will say something like the name of your teacher. And it'll say, you know, she, your teacher posted something on Google Classroom. So maybe that's something that you want to go and check out. Because it means that your teacher posted something there. Probably that he or she wants you to see. Okay. So that's that. Um, how to compose an email. How to create labels to help you organize. Um, and that's it. It. I will also be showing you how to manage your Google Drive and Google Classroom in separate videos. Um, but just know that, again, you can access them from here. So you can click Drive and it opens up a new window with Google Drive. So when I start work, I like to open my email and I like to open my Drive. Um, and you can also open your Google Classroom from here and it'll show you the different classes that you are enrolled in. So I'll stop right here for our email. And then I will continue with um, separate videos for the other two apps. Thanks for listening.